Hey, what's up, guy? Girl, how's it going? Somebody on Intertube Webs was talking about how you can play sound when you destroy game objects. Uh, and like, I was just like, oh no. And I don't understand what happened. So today's a pretty quick, you know, uh, it's a quick tutorial. And we're going to show you how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is create a C sharp script. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to call it play sound pound. Open it up. See what it's about. Look at it. Now we need to create two variables for this particular script. Call it audio clip, my audio clip, underscore my audio clip, or whatever you want. Call whatever you want. It's fine. Make it public. The next variable we need to create is of type audio source. Call it whatever you want, my audio source, anything you want. And in the start function, we're gonna say underscore audio source is equal to get component. Audio source, not audio settings. Awesome. Delete the update function if you're not using it. Right now, it's not gonna be used, so delete it. You wanna look at on trig enter, do that later. Uh, we're gonna use uh, void on click enter and then we need to create a variable in the parameters underscore collision my collision 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 whatever you want to call it and for testing purposes I'm gonna use print not debug and then to see if it's working we're gonna type something in the print you can see we got an error right away good job Copy and paste audio source over audio settings if you got audio settings. Save you a little bit of time. Check it out, look at it, see what's happening. We're gonna put on the cannonball. It's a big black cannonball. Click and drag your script onto the big black cannonball. Now, for some reason, my phone buzz sound was not recording when I recorded the video, so I apologize a million times over. I don't know what happened. It works. Doing some play testing, you can see right now, we got some sort of problem where the ball is not touching the, the ground. Take a look. We fix that by adding a sphere collider. There's the old scripts on the camera that I re I forgot to remove the components from. Components. Collision. Ouch! It's working. Now one of the things you gotta do is tags. Now we gotta tag the ground. I'm gonna call it big ground, not my black ball. Like I did earlier, it didn't work. Big ground, make sure it's spelled correctly. You can copy pasta over if you like. And we're gonna say collision dot game object tag equal equal. And look at this. I do this every time. I always forget to add the tag I just created. Add the tag big ground to your plane. Ouch, that's a big black ball. Now we gotta play. So we're gonna use underscore audio source dot play one shot. And we gotta put something to play one shot parameters. Look at this mess right here. Save yourself a little bit of time. Copy pasta over. 
into the play one shot parameters. Missing component, new audio source attached to Big Black Cannonball Z. Oh, goodness gracious. It's tough being like that, I know. I, I feel you, man. Yes, yes. And it worked. Now I promise you that it worked. You can't hear the phone buzz when the black ball touches the big ground. Now the question that they came up with was they didn't want to destroy the game object after the sound was played. That's why this tutorial was made. See now what's happening is the game object, which in this case is the big black ball, cannonball, is being destroyed before the sound even really has a chance to play. If this would recorded the system audio, you would have known that. See, so now it's destroying it, which is fine, which is what we want, but we can't hear the sound, not because the system recorded it, but because the game object is being destroyed before we have a chance to play the freaking sound, man. So just comment that out real quick. Destroy game object, comment it out. And we'll look again, look at it. Did you look at it? Try it again. Yes. So what do we do now? This is the problem. We need to find a solution. What's the solution? Uh, well, there's a million ways to skin a cat, but I'm gonna use a start co-routine. Stone co-routine. And you should always name your functions short like this. Destroy game object after sound played. Okay, thanks. And also, if you use the word please, you never get errors. And the more explanation points you use in your print debug.log, the easier the solution is. It's true. So we need to change void to I enumerator because we're returning a value. Return new, wait for. Wait for seconds, that's right. If you wanna learn about coroutines, I got a coroutine video that's gonna blow your socks right off. So one cool thing is instead of typing in one, two, or three seconds or whatever, we're going to use my awesome audio clip dot length to wait to destroy the game object. So we're going to, it's going to collide with the ground, play the sound. If the sound is three seconds long, it'll wait for the, did I say song or sound? It'll wait for the, the sound to finish playing and then it'll destroy the game object. And to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room or whatever, you can even add a little extra bit, extra juice to it. You want, you want some extra juice? You can. Well, let's give it one extra juice. One extra juice. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. That's the sweet juice right there. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Just click on the icon and you'll be on your way. And when you do, you'll help send me to space via Virgin Galactic.